I know with my uh, New York brogue, a lot of people think I'm Italian, but I'm not. I'm German, Irish, with some English wrapped up in there. Uh, this camera thing kind of accentuates my accent for some reason. I thought I had my elocution classes on, uh, having this accent under control, but sometimes I lose it. But no, I'm German. And as Germans are wont to do, we like to over-engineer. We love to over-engineer. And that could be a great thing, and it could be a, uh, sometimes a crazy thing. So I, I definitely went over-engineering today. Didn't watch the game at all Monday. You know, I didn't want to see the live thing again because it's just I wanted to study the game. Because the more I talk to people in the comment sections and listen to other people and other blogs and stuff, and I thought about it, this was a historic game. It's not going to determine a Super Bowl winner. It's not going to be anything like that. But when you study the game, for the historians of the game, understanding the core of this game is the human body, human mind in a meat grinder and trying to survive and thrive. And this was one of the greatest meat grinders I think anybody's ever seen. It's up there. Even if it's not the number one, it's, it's up there. This is insane. The heat, bodies dropping before they come to the game, bodies dropping in the game. This was going into your bench and then going into the stands to find somebody to fill in holes. This was crazy. And so I was really, you know, I, was, I woke up Tuesday raring to go. You know, I was really excited. I'm like, how am I going to cover this game? You know, how am I going to take this masterpiece and, and cover it? You know, and I was thinking about it. I said, you know, I got to do the whole thing. But I said, how can, no one's going to watch me do videos for three hours of this game. It'd be nuts. It'd be wasting my time. It'd be like two people, you know, crazy tinfoil hat guys like me, you know, looking at the thing going, uh, you know, whatever. So I had to be realistic. So what I did is I, I, I said, I'm going to cover, I still got to cover the whole game, but I wanted to deal on the macro themes, the clashing of the macro ideas and go to play by play. I mean, I worked all day, like, you know, like all day. I woke up, coffee, uh, you know, coffee, 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 all the way up into the evening to get this thing going here, and I got the first half done. Now, I, if, if, it's, if it's what you guys like, I'll do the second half. I'm happy to do that, actually, you know. But you can see the main themes and how they eventually went. Came back in the second half and continued to play out and really were the main determiners of this game. I took stills using all 22, and I took, uh, you know, overhead shot to big shot for pass plays, and then, like, the, the behind the quarterback for run plays or pressure plays, and sometimes, com you know, com combine them in a giant pastiche with, like, my doodads to kind of, like, emphasize what I was talking about for all the plays, except for the Brissett plays and then the last drive because, you know, it was a rush play. You know, it didn't really – fulfill the macro themes because it was a rush drive and Brissett clearly shows that Tua changed the way the defense looks when they play him. So I just pulled those kind of two out. Uh, and I want to cover the major themes to show you how conceptually, the conceptual and philosophical application of the game plan can create wins and sometimes losses. And even when you should win, because you're a better team or you've got injuries in certain areas, this game plan, this, this philosophy, the understanding the major themes that you're bringing in to clash against the opposition can lead to victory. That is not to say the Bills aren't a great team. I personally think they're a better team. But, you know, they had heat. They had injuries coming in. We had injuries coming in. We both, both teams had injuries on both sides in the game. And, you know, Holland making this pick or Milano getting this pick or, you know, uh, Tua getting his pass or, or whatever, Allen getting his pass would have changed it. But the macro themes set the table, and that's what I want to go over. And uh, before I dial in these macro themes and the film, I just want to say thank you for stopping by. Uh, you guys are the best. You allow me to be the crazy man to go over this film like a mad scientist and let my German side totally get out and study this stuff for a living. So the likes, the subscribes, the comments, the views, all that stuff, it means the world to me. Just want to give a shout out to Ace Perhead, my sponsor, because without them and without you, this show ain't going down. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. All right, so because there's a lot of film, 
I'm not going to gab on too much. And I want you to be able to form your own opinion. You know, to me, I, this show, what I do here is about trying to present information and I attach my opinion. And if you take it and you leave it, whatever. But my main thing is to bring information and form your own opinion. And we have discussions and we both learn all that little stuff. So the major themes that I saw was on offense, McDaniel decided to have diverse looks, diverse application in both the run and the pass, attacking inside, outside at every zone, which had the Bills defense, the linebackers sucking up and believing in the play action, and it put pressure on all areas, and eventually because of the rookiness, uh, the injuries, certain gaps opened up and were exposed, and the Dolphins took advantage of it. And then on defense, the Miami Dolphins, they did their zero blitz, and then when they saw the Bills using that leaking running back to beat the blitz, they kept the pressure on, but then they began to put a funnel effect on the outer perimeter to watch these running backs. And while it didn't stop it, it limited it and kept the pressure on Allen, who wasn't given the same opportunities of having diverse looks and diverse uh, attack with run and pass. Really, the main concept was the leaking running backs, attacking the perimeter with the run and pass, and then going deep. And all the while, Allen was playing like backyard football, constantly on an unstable platform, handling pressure, pressure in his face, and having to make the big pass. And on defense, they were hamstrung in a sense because all those injuries in the secondary, they weren't able to attack to a, the way they would if they had a healthy secondary. And then two, his mobility kind of limited them. You could see that when Brissett came in and how they attacked differently. And because the Bills did not really push the run game, not, you know, run heavy, but pass balanced and attack the center, it kept the Miami Dolphins in the game, kept the pressure on Allen, and eventually he wasn't able to make the awesome pass, and that was part of the problem. Dolphins had their problems on offense, but it was less uh, design and application, and it was more about the offensive line breaking down. You'll see that. I'll show that. And so the philosophy I felt from the Dolphins was better. Now the heat was a huge factor to an injury, injured team, but this philosophy difference helped the Dolphins overcome the better team. McDermott and I think Frazier had an excellent game plan. They did really, really good with considering, except for that third and 22. But on offense, Dorsey had a great idea with the leaking tight end, uh, the leaking running backs, but after that, he became predictable, and the Dolphins just did not believe any of the play action, and it was a wasted motion, and it just seemed like Dorsey and the offensive staff needed to pick, on that, pick up on that and see that and begin to attack differently with some runs or with something else. And so that's really the major themes for me. I'll go through all the first half. And, uh, you know, if you guys want, at the end of it, you know, in the comment section, tell me if you know, I'll do the whole second half tomorrow or the, whatever, next day. So anyway, without further ado, because it's, it's a long tape and I got to, you know, I'm running off the mouth here. Anyway, so let's take a look at the tape and see what we see. All right, the Bills open up. Uh, they're doing what they want to do is attack deep and rely on Allen and passing game. And the Dolphins are, are bringing a blitz. They get, you know, some not immediate pressure. You can see over here that Allen gets the ball for plenty of time, but the pressure's there. It's, it, it's creeping pressure. And then he comes back with another play, but this time it's immediate pressure with Bates getting beat by Wilkins, and he's got to do the yo-yo and a quick step. He delivers two big pass plays, but two plays with pressure. Then they come back with the outside run, which, you know, you admit Dolphins are missing Raekwon Davis, and really they're pretty good against the edge run. Right here, Knox gets you know, he gets destroyed by Ingram, who destroys the play. But then, you know, Allen comes back, and you can see Bates right there getting beat, and Wilkins gets his hand up, and you can see a crowd over here. It looks like the, the, the routes weren't run right or some kind of confusion because you don't have three players in that type 
tight of a space, especially two receivers in that tight of space. But Allen delivers the pass, and it's a big pass. Comes back. You can see the, the leaning platform again. He's, he's not really having platform discipline this game. But, you know, he's Allen, so he delivers a football. Doesn't really go anywhere. The Dolphins are playing over. They're playing Real, real coverage here, straight across coverage. Then you come back to the, again, the edge attacking the edges. And I don't like this play too much because, you know, Dawkins is supposed to kind of get out there to the DB on the screen. It doesn't go nowhere. The play gets killed. Then there's the botch snap, which you could say, well, this is the reason why there wasn't a lot of Allen on the center. But they should have had him prepped to snap the football and be able to replace uh, um, Morse. You know, that I don't know. I mean, I could see that, but I don't like that. That would be good setup. So there's the, the now, now they come back on inside run. And I believe this one was this one from under Santa. I can't remember. But there was a really good blocking here, and they almost score. I mean, Singletary gets down to the one yard line real nice. And I think this is what they should have done more from. And then uh, I got crazy little graphics over here. They go to pass. I think it's a second. Third down here, third down. And uh, Dolphins are just playing across the end zone. They're playing coverage. They, they shut down the inside stuff right away. And Allen just, he has to come back. And you see picture number two to his left side. And there's nothing there. And then he's got to run. And the Dolphins are able to catch him from behind. I think that's Ingram. And they get back to the line of scrimmage. And then over here, he dumps it off to Singletary. And Singletary and the running backs, you know, the fullbacks, Gilliam, and all the running backs, getting those outlet passes to kind of take advantage of the Dolphins. Pressure happens all day. But this is not an easy pass. Pressure in his face. Uh, good touchdown. Dolphins come back. And, you know, they do a quick play here, two seconds. But you can see the top. You can see Vaughn is taking advantage a little. And then they come back on the next play, and you can see Eichenberg gets beat. I guess that's Daquan, and just he instantly dropped. And Tua gets the ball off quick. This is the ticky tack uh, pass interference holding call that's on the Bills defense. But look how close that is before that ball's released before him getting hit. Quick release pays off big dividends. And then they come back with the run game, and I I can't remember who it was. I think it's a fullback. I think it's Ingold makes a nice block here to really open it up, but Eichenberg, you see backside, little kind of fall on the ground, but it's not a big deal. And then you can see Eichenberg on the ground here. Edmonds gets off him, but uh, Dolphins, Edmonds, the running back, has a nice cut inside, a real nice run, and he picks up a couple. But if Eichenberg could have held that off, it could have been a bigger play. Then they come back to the pass, and Little gets spun on by by Vaughn, just take it to school. And you can see down here, the ball comes out all weird. And, and either to his hand was hit, the ball was hit, but the pressure kind of ended that play. And then they go back again to the run, but Eichenberg gets beat again, like really quick. And he's on the ground. And then the running back's got no blocking. You know, he's supposed to be able to, you know, uh, Eichenberg's supposed to hold up 92 to allow him to make a choice of where to go. But there's nowhere to go without blue in front of him. And the play dies. Eichenberg's on the ground again. All right, so the Dolphins punt, and the Bills, they come back with a draw play, and Baker, who who is not known to attack, stack, and shed, somehow at 235 is able to hold Bates off and just really level him, throw him off, and then suck up all the space, come in and make the tackle. Real great play by Baker, real poor block by Bates. Very surprising considering Baker's uh, weakness at attack, stack, and shed. I hope it continues, of course, as a Dolphin fan, but... So then, then you come back to another draw play, and the Dolphins have seven guys in the box, and, you know, they just basically shut this thing down. Then you get the strip sack, uh, Dawkins just can't get to the edge, and that's expected on the blitzing uh, Holland, but then the, the running back, he kind of misdiagnosed, isn't there quick enough, and then the strip sack, Dolphins come back. And pressure comes in. My man Tehran's got pressure, gave up a little pressure here, and Eichenberg helps him out. Two delivers a nice ball, considering the pressure in his face. And Dolphins get down to the one-yard line. There's the, the sack. I mean, is there the quarterback sneak? And you can see Tua just kind of getting bunched up there. He actually looks like he got his back got hurt, really lends credence to that. And then there's the run inside where Little kind of blows the tackle, uh, the block. And then his, uh, his man makes the tackle and stops the Dolphins at the one. And then there's the run. Uh, here, split down in two pieces. Uh, second run. And Eichenberg gets beaten, but Milano kind of falls to the ground, and 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 Edmonds 
just sneaks in right behind him. It was a great block, great block by Connor to open that up. And thankfully uh, for us, Milano fell. And then you got a 7-7 game. So the Bills come back again. They got the guys, the wide receivers spread out. They're in shotgun. And you can see a key block here uh, by Knox on Agba for the uh, the jet sweep. It's a nice pickup. And then, again, passing deep with the Dolphins are just covering everything up. And Allen really doesn't have anywhere to go. There's some pressure on him. He dumps it off. But there's a pickup for the first down, so it's a good play. But it, it's kind of a little, little wild in there. Dolphins are bringing that pressure and shutting down the pass a little bit. And then, uh, again, there's some more pressure here. It, it's a little bit of phantom pressure. Allen just boots out, though, and he, he gets to uh, Kumro. It was, a, it was a nice play by Allen, who's just a superstar with his movement skills. And he delivers to Kumro, who gets hurt on this, but he does pick up the first. And then there's the pitch outside. And again, Ingram just shuts down Gilliam and there's nowhere to go. Backside's clogged. And that run is dead. Again, I, I still think they should have attacked more on the inside. Then there's the one where Ingram gets the pressure and gives a, uh, you can see in the first one, he gives the karate kick in the second one inset to the below to, to Allen. And, uh, you know, I really... I can't believe the refs didn't see that. That was should have been a penalty. Uh, but that messes up the play. That's part of the game. That's part of the game. That's part of the game. And then uh, Paul, the ball gets knocked down, and the Highland has to come back again. And on this one, he's got a little pressure in his face again, but he delivers a deep, semi-deep pass for the first down. Well, actually, close to the first down to the running back who leaks out. And then... Clock, uh, the quarter flips, and he comes back and another pass. And, you know, the Dolphins right now, what they're doing is they're blitzing, and then the edge linebacker, edge guys are coming out just to handle the leaks. So they understand what the Bills are going to do, that one get-out-of-jail-free card. And, and not every play, but every so often, they're going to have those linebackers, edge guys, just sit there waiting for those leakers. So he wants to go to Singletary to the right, for the short first down, but it's not there. The pressure's there, and Seal has got his hand on it, but Allen, the animal that he is, breaks out and just barely gets the first down. First down, but things are not going exactly as planned. Then there's inside pressure here. Uh, actually, uh, that's uh, Cuisenberry, I think, who gets beat. And there's a stunt here between Wilkins and Ingram and Bates and Cuisenberry, I believe. They can't handle it. The inside pressure comes inside. Allen gets hit. And there's that sack. All right, so you here you see on, on one, you can see Agba beating Cuisenberry. You see inside pressure from the Blitz. Dolphins are dropping a bunch of guys. Bill's keeping a bunch in, but there's not really any place to go at first. And the pressure starts getting to Allen, you can see in two. And look at that. It's not even like a full, proper platform. He's like just kind of side-arming and throwing, which is unbelievable. And he drops this beautiful rainbow in over Howard uh, to pick up the first down, which is mind-blowing. But it's just really difficult to put even a great quarterback like Allen in this continuous pressure situation. And then comes back. He has an offset eye. And there's a chance to run here. But, again, they go for the play action. But look at, the, look at 55 and look at Ingram. They're not buying on it. They're immediately dropping. And, and they, they just say they're bleeding pass, pass, pass. Wilkins gets inside on the pressure here and drives Allen out. This is where he boots out to the uh, sideline, just throws it away. Then he comes back here and just dumps it off, but the Dolphins are playing over. They understand the leak. They get the immediate pressure again, dump it off. Nothing happens here. It's stopped. But the leak comes out again, and Allen just is able to drop it in for another touchdown. So then the Dolphins come back. And they do a zone stretch run. And you see in the top here, there's three, you know, there's two looks of the same play. Eichenberg misses his guy, and that really messes up any cutback. And uh, the edge, at the edge, the tight end's doing okay. Really, it's not a great job blocking. It's just most of it getting to the edge using pure speed to outrun. Not so great blocking to pick up a couple. And then here you can see. 
uh, at the top with the arrow, you can see Tehran and Connor. Just they're the, they're, they are holding their blocks. Those are the key blocks. And you just, you know, you got six guys in these zones in, in the red boxes. And then you got Hill on his own down below here. It was just something wasn't right. And obviously with all the injuries, all the rookies, something didn't come out right. Because this is not what you want to leave a huge void like that. Uh, so then they come back. And there's some good coverage here. And the Dolphins have to pass out to uh, Smythe at the corner here. Nice little pass play by Tua. Picks up the first. And then, again, you can see here uh, just a real excellent pass by Tua again into the hole to Waddle. Good protection all the way around. And this is this is not anything other than a really good pass and a really good receiver finding the hole and getting there. I don't think it really had anything to do other than that. Pick a big play. And then there's the one where they get pressure on too, and he uses that quick release to dump it off to Gusecki, and he picks up, you know, a couple. And then, see, on this one, they get the uh, the jet sweep going here, and they get a real good run out of this. You can see Hill with the arrow making a nice block. He's not the greatest blocker, but he makes a nice block. They pick up a good run here, but if you go back to the beginning of the play and the little inset in the below and to the right, you can see they do the inside play action with Mostert, and the Bills linebackers are actually biting on it. And that's the difference. The play action was respected by the Bills from the Dolphins' offense, but not conversely on the other side. And that biting opens up that giant right lane for, I guess it was Waddle to pick it up. I can't remember. Uh, so big game. And they, they come back, another run to the outside with Mostert, but the Bills just shut it down. There's too many men, not enough blockers, and not enough good blockers either. And then this is just the one where Tua, man, makes a great pass. I mean, look at this. He just zings this thing, and look how tight this is. This is a gunslinger. This is somebody who is extremely trusting in their receivers and gutsy. And he wings it in there, and he gets the 14-14, and it's all tied up. All right, so they come back. Allen, he gets a little scramble. He scrambles out, does a little short boot, and gets a little pickup over here with the outside pass. And then, but look at the pressure in his face. You know, he's, he, he is a, turns out to be a good pass, you know, small little yardage, but good yardage. But again, the pressure is consistently there. And then, again, you see that they're running the play action here in a circle. But watch how deep the linebackers are. They're just not even buying it. They're not buying anything the Bills are selling with a play action. And then, he, you know, he, he he really doesn't have many plays to go, so he drops it off underneath. But the linebacker is just ready to charge at it and picks up a couple only. Then on this one, you get uh, a little wing out pass here, a little screen pass. And it's a nice little completion. You pick up five. And then you get the play action again. But watch. See, look at the, in one. Look at the Dolphins linebackers. They're not even buying into it at all. And so you can see here he does a play action. Look where the linebacker's depth is already. It's already killing those underneath routes. So there's nowhere for him to go. And he comes back to the top to uh, cook. But the pressure is already coming inside. You can see down at the bottom on two, or at the top of two right there, pressure's already starting. And by the time he gets back to Cook, it's too much pressure. And in four, you can see the ball is short and Allen again on the ground. So the Dolphins are understanding kind of what the Bills are doing, and Bills aren't really making great adjustments. Again, some play action, but watch the linebackers dropping. Now, this is one Allen could have made. There's pressure coming in on him. But he decides to throw the mid route that's covered. But the top, I can't see who that is. He's breaking wide open. This was a touchdown that was left on the table. But Allen was just getting pressure and he just didn't see it. Then he come back, another pass rush. And you can see Agba just beating, I guess that's Cuisenberry. And then Allen's right there, ready to throw the pass. But Agba's bearing down on him again. And he gets the ball off. But it's it doesn't... It doesn't arrive right, isn't caught. 
dead play. And then Dolphins come back, and they do an outside run. And there's some really good blocking. Everybody does a good job. Even Eichenberg gets up. They could have done a better job, but beautiful block by Ingle. Beautiful block. You can see 58. You can. I should have highlighted him. He's the guy holding everything up the wall. And my man, Tehran. There's a nice little run here. And then there's another run. Coming back, Miami's feeling himself with the run game, but Eichenberg gets just tossed to the side, and Edmonds doesn't stand a chance that I could play gets killed. And then Tua comes back, and this is the one where he gets hurt. I see this pressure. Uh, my man Tehran, just, you know, he, he gets taken to the outside, and Edmonds can't handle the blitz. And it just felt like the protection wasn't right. It felt like something was off there. i got to go back and check. But I want to really focus on, yeah, two was hurt. But look at his throwing position right here. And he puts that ball almost 30 yards downfield, and it's a catch in that tight window over there. That's a quality arm. Okay, so Allen is a star. But you can't have your star being pressured and carrying you know, it's just not a successful idea. And when you're running play action and the defense isn't buying it, why are you running it? You have to create a real running attack for the linebackers to suck up in order for you to even waste your time doing it. And if you do, Allen will probably become unstoppable. Because look what he did with the defense playing over all day and and him being hamstrung with only a handful of tools attack certain sectors, just imagine if this guy had a full complement, a run-diverse look and attack, a, a, a diverse look and attack that the defense... I, I got to go back and study the techniques. It really looked like the, the, the first down, they knew what you guys were doing. And it would put you in long and put you in longer. And it wasn't about... I would say, Allen not coming through, it was the OC needs to help him out. I don't dislike Dorsey. I liked a lot of stuff when I saw in the first three weeks. But I don't like Dable, and I didn't like this game plan. And I think you will grow. I, I think you need to add in more running and play action and interior runs with Saffold, who's, you know, a monster. This outside run stuff. And that's what the Titans did to you guys the week before. So it was ironic in a sense. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm real tired. Had loads of coffee. Uh, There's a big project. I don't know if this is going to go over like a Led Zeppelin or it's going to be okay. Uh, I, I gave my best, so I hope you enjoy. Anyway, no more. No mas. Curtis saying thank you for stopping by. Please like, comment, subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you uh, – this – Helped you out, even without my commentary, just to, to film itself to help you see how this thing played out to get a better understanding. Let me know if you want me to do the second half. Curtis saying, I'm going to sleep. Catch you next time. Be well. See you soon. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world. 